In this video, we are going to learn about scenario graphs. When you are working as a research analyst or maybe credit analyst or maybe uh, IB analyst, you are required to give to your clients not only your most expected assumptions, but you should also give various scenarios. Those scenarios can be pessimistic in nature, known as downsides, or maybe optimistic in nature, known as upsides. So at the end of the day, a client should be able to visually gauge how the valuations of the company would perform if these pessimistic or optimistic events do follow. So let us look at within this context of discussion this example. If you look at this graph here, you will find that there's a base valuation of $300 for XYZ valuation com. Now what we have here is there are pessimistic scenarios or the so-called downsides. Likewise on the on the right hand side you can find there are upsides. What these downsides mean is, let's say if there was a price decrease. Price decrease can mean that there can be a price decrease of your product or because of that at the end of the day the revenues which flow in and ultimately the cash flows are hurt and it results in $17 shave off from your base case valuations. So I mean this is what is being represented visually. This needs to be documented in the table first and then we will be able to make uh, the graph. The second downside. Uh, which we look at is higher taxes. Maybe in the budget, the corporate taxes announced were uh, earlier it was 30%. Now it may be, let's say, 50%, and it can possess a significant downside. So, you know, $28 per se resulting in, in the downside. So, do remember that these 17 and 28 are cumulative in nature. From 300, if even one, that is price decrease happens, $17 is shaved off and what we get in terms of result is 283. Likewise, from this 283, if there's another downside, you know, the downside can be because of higher taxes. At the end of the day, your valuations will further get shaved off to 255. Likewise, if third event happens, higher raw materials, so in higher raw materials would mean that let's say this company was into automobiles and um, they had to source steel and other things from uh, outside India or outside your country. So at the end of the day, if higher raw materials would result in lower uh, gross margins, which will mean lower cash flows. So this will further lead to, you know, uh, valuation erosion. So to an extent, if one, two and three negative events are combined, the most pessimistic valuation that we will look at is 230. So this is how, you know, we are interpreting the downsides. Likewise, you know, there can be a mix of downsides as well as upsides, but we want to show it exclusively. So let's say if there was a combination of higher prices, lower taxes and lower raw materials on the upside, these are the numbers to look at. 40 just because of higher prices, 27 because of lower taxes and 43 because of lower raw materials. So at the end of the day, from 300 to 340, because of higher prices from 340 to 367 uh, because of higher prices and lower taxes and when all these three happen together we get a most optimistic case which is 410. So what we now have to do is how do we go ahead in terms of you know making this graph. Remember that you know we had made, uh, made uh, the stacked graphs already. The key to the graph this would be is 